This is Daniel Rossiter, uh, Psychology Assignment 2. Arousal. Uh, my personal definition of arousal is how physically and mentally ready you are affect your performance. Um, a referred definition of arousal would be arousal is basically being alert physically and mentally. Various body systems and hormones are involved and contribute to alertness and readiness to move. Some signs of arousal are increased heart rate and blood pressure and also having some quick responses. Um, examples of arousal would be uh, for one in darts when checking out um, a double to, uh, perhaps to win the world championship. Uh, your arousal levels would be very high and um, pressure would also be very high which would help increase your arousal level. Um, also in football when taking a penalty you would be aroused as it may be a big occasion such as the World Cup. You could be under a lot of pressure from the crowd or media which therefore again increase arousal. Um, a third example would be in cricket um, when the last boy is being born in the ashes and the batting side require one run to win. Um, you'd be highly aroused as it may um, as you may again be under pressure from the media also the crowd and also just pressure to win from teammates. And fourth and finally, uh, archery would be another example, as the target area that required to hit is actually very small, which will also increase arousal, because obviously difficulty is much higher, and also therefore pressure, again, is much higher. Holes drive theory. Um, the idea behind the holes drive theory is that the higher your arousal level, the higher the level of your performance, um, but the lower the arousal level, the lower your level of performance. Uh, basically, the more aroused you are when playing sport, the better you'll perform. In theory, um, at high levels of arousal, the dominant behaviour will be carried out by a performer. Um, for example, in football, when taking a penalty, if an elite athlete is aroused, they will score, as their dominant behaviour would be to score. Um, whereas if a novice was to take a penalty, um, when highly aroused, they are more than likely miss, as their skill has not been drilled into them like an elite athlete. Therefore, their dominant behaviour will probably be to miss. <clears throat> uh, in versus you hypothesis. This theory is a curvilinear relationship between arousal and performance. This works in three stages. You have low arousal, um, which is where you will underperform and give a poor performance. You have optimal arousal, which is where you are, you are at your peak, um, you are performing at the best of your ability, you can perform to a better standard. Um, and then you have over arousal, which, which is a slow but very steady decrease in performance, causing you to get worse and worse, giving a poor final performance. Um, an example of this would be in sport, if you're playing the game of your life, playing in the midfield for the England football team, so you Steven Gerrard, um, he was highly aroused, it was the World Cup final, and then all of a sudden uh, perhaps he made a mistake, um, or was got too aroused and during the event, um, a bit overwhelmed, which made added pressure on him, which made him underperform, therefore over arousal. Ideally every athlete would obviously like to perform at their optimum arousal, given the best performance possible. Uh, sports. Um, sports arousal, this is how arousal affects your levels of concentration and how it affects um, more within certain sports. Um, this graph basically demonstrates how different levels of arousal are suited towards different sports. For example, low levels of arousal would be suited to sports which require a high level of concentration. So sports such as darts, shooting or golf, as they require a lot of concentration. Um, on the other hand, high levels of arousal are suited for sports which require lower levels of concentration, such as weightlifting. Um, obviously you require a high level of arousal, you really want to boost yourself up to so you use all your strength and power, but you require less concentration, that's the only thing you really have to think about, is more like your more of your technique. Um, and then finally, the third phase would be you have a middle sector, um, which is required for sports such as football, as you require high and low concentration within the sports. So for example, you require high concentration and low arousal when taking a penalty, because you really want to concentrate not to arouse, um, you don't want massive amounts of arousal, so you're more likely to score. Um, um, but whereas you also need high concentration, um, low concentration, sorry, and high arousal, where at times when, such as running with the ball, as you require obviously a high high amount of arousal to really boost yourself, run fast, move the ball quick. Skill. This is how skills are split into com complex and simple categories. Um, for example, skills like motor skills require and above average level of arousal, so you want quite a high level of arousal in order to perform a motor skill. Whereas fine skills are perform better with low arousal level, as you may require more concentration. And then finally, grass skills are required at a much higher level of arousal in order to be performed, as you require some, some less concentration. Um, so, for example, skills such as um, such as keeping up, for example, for an elite athlete would be, you would require more, um, for an elite athlete less concentration, and they'd probably be able to do them with higher arousal. 
whereas a novice would require more concentration, therefore their arousal level would be lower. Performer. Um, this is all about how the level of performer affects their development of skills. Um, for example, an elite athlete will have the skills for their sports drilled into them every day, therefore they require less concentration, as their skill ability level is very high. Um, whereas a complete novice to the sport does not need any of the skills required drilled into them, therefore they require a very high level of concentration, which causes their arousal level to be low. An intermediate athlete may be able to perform the basics within a sport with a lower concentration, but the majority of the skills and upper level ability skills they require a much higher level of concentration compared to an elite athlete. Therefore, their arousal level would still be quite low when performing the highest skills. Um, so, an example would be in tennis, perhaps the serve. Um, an elite athlete would probably have to do it, be able to do it with a much lower concentration. Therefore, their arousal level would be much higher. Whereas a novice would have to concentrate a lot more on their on a, their perfect serve and their target area. Therefore, their arousal level would be much lower. The catastrophe theory. Um, sports psychologists have noted that performance does not just gradually decrease as the level of arousal decreases. It can just suddenly drop as soon as they pass over their optimum arousal level. Uh, this is known as choking. Um, choking is where a performer uh, reaches optimum arousal and then goes over, becomes over aroused, and their performance, of course, has a rapid decrease, and they cannot basically can't complete a very basic skill correctly. Um, for example, um, a basketball player maybe have an absolutely fantastic game, having scoring three pointers all game long, hasn't missed a shot, um, needs to sc score three throws to win the game, and then suddenly is put under this pressure, they start to become over aroused, causing them to miss by by quite a distance, therefore that would be choking, they've choked under the pressure, choking under the situation, and then their performance score has a rapid decrease and perhaps makes them perform with a lower level ability level for the rest of the game. Another example of choking would be if you're in the World Cup for England football team and Frank Lampard had a penalty in the 89th minute and he hasn't missed one all season, he may become over aroused and choke, causing him to miss the penalty, again therefore resulting in perhaps a loss of a game. Low, high and optimum arousal. Um, low arousal can lead to an athlete having a very broad attention span. Uh, this means they'll be concentrating on everything but the task required. Um, their concentration is taken by irrelevant cues um, within the environment. So. An example of that could be when an athlete is trying to play a game, but all they can think about is uh, one of the blunt gentlemen on the on the side of the pitch having an argument, perhaps, or having a conversation with his friend, and all they can think about is the conversation they're having, um, rather than actually the game at hand. Um, <clears throat> high arousal will lead to an athlete having very tunnel vision and narrow vision. Um, an example of this would be if you were marked in football every time you received the ball, all that player will be thinking about is taking on their player and beating their man, rather than passing and moving the ball around them to go forward. And when over the over aroused, the athlete's concentration is very hypersensitive, as they're only able to focus on one cue at a time. Therefore, they can't focus on a pass and move in. They're just very concentrated straight on that pass. And once they've done that, they can move on to their next cue. Um, optimal arousal is where an athlete has optimal concentration. They are able to concentrate on all relevant cues in their sport. For example, their technique, their place of shot, the position of the goalkeeper when taking a penalty. And they're concentrating on all sorts of cues that help them aid their performance and make them a better performer. Stress. Stress is the process whereby an individual perceives a threat and responds with a series of psych psychological and physiological changes. We perceive that demands, threats or fears outweigh the perceived capabilities or benefits. A referred definition stress is the body's reaction to a change that requires a physical, mental or emotional adjustment or response. That's by Angela Morrow in 2011. There are two different types of stress. These are U-stress and distress. U-stress, this is the good form of stress. This gives, a, gives out a feeling of fulfillment. This type of stress can increase skill level and focus an individual's attention to a specific aspect within a sport. Finally, U stress is also the aid in the increase of intrinsic motivation. This means it will help the player play better because of their love for the sport, their passion to win, their desire to play. On the other hand, to this, you have distress. Distress is known as the worst type of stress. You gain an extreme feeling of anxiety, nervousness, apprehension, and worry. This, can, this is a major cause of choking um, during sport, as people tend to worry, get distressed within a game, start losing concentration, start not picking up on the relevant cues within the game, um, which causes a massive drop in performance. Um, we have our parasympathetic response and our sympathetic response. Um, some uh, sympathetic responses that may, no, may 
make you think of it, it would be pupil, your pupils dilating, your heart rate would increase, your breathing rate could increase, your blood is redirected to all your limbs rather than obviously all your muscles, your digestion stops, uh, slow, slows down your metabolism so you're not processing food as fast and you decrease your saliva production so you can find you get a very dry mouth. Um, our parasympathetic response uh, is, is very opposite, um, your pupils constrict, your heart rate tends to decrease, um, your breathing rate also tends to decrease, um, blood gets to all your major organs within the body, um, digestion resumes again so it starts working, um, increases metabolism, so you start processing faster, you start really being able to work hard and increase your saliva, so you'll find that your mouth obviously isn't as dry and you can speak Normally, um, the sympathetic response works at the same time as the parasympathetic response, but works a lot harder. <coughs> types of stress. There are many different types of stress. Um, external, ex external stress is one. Um, this is where things that are in our surroundings and environment cause stress within a, on a person. So, for example, perhaps your competition, your opponent, the crowd, the weather, um, automatically add stress onto your performance. So, for example, if you've got a football match on a Sunday, um, you have to wake up and the weather is bad and you never, obviously you don't really want to go out in the rain or the weather or perhaps wet, wet, worse weather, it's very cold um, this can instantly add stress on your performance making you perform worse we also have internal stress um, this is the thing that we think about just before performance such as past memories and experiences or perhaps current injuries so if you're playing a player that's very good um, that you know, perhaps you know that they're quicker than you or something like that and that sort of plays on your mind slightly just before, before the start of the game um, also, we have personal factors, so this is just stress caused by your friends, family, partners, life factors, um, perhaps costs, money, uh, just living costs perhaps, this is outside of sports, you never know, you could just be struggling for money or uh, things like that, and it's just playing on your mind when you're trying to perform, which again can cause a decrease in performance level. Um, another type of stress would be occupational, um, this is where cause of stress may be due to a problem with your job, um, for example, perhaps your job satisfaction, job sorry about that, job satisfaction, um, so if you're not happy with your job or you may be unemployed, this is sort of like ticking you over, kind of playing on your mind when you're trying to perform, it just doesn't allow you to get to that optimum level of performance. And then finally, final type of stress would be due to your sport, and um, this could include relationships, probably your teammates, coaches, managers, um, for example if you're having a disagreement in the team this may cause stress and affect performance, or if you, if you know you've had an argument with your coach and it's just not not quite working properly, then you could realise, you know, that that is playing on your mind throughout the game, which therefore again can cause a decrease in performance, making you perform under your optimal arousal level. Last but not least is anxiety. Um, anxiety is a result of interaction between an individual and the environment. Um, it's an emotional response to the demands placed upon the individual um, by the environment. Um, state anxiety, um, this is a temporary ever changing state that is an emotional response to a situation considered to be threatening. Um, so perhaps if you're against a player that you know is faster than you, it's really, he's, he's beating you regular basis, it's really starting to um, get you down and he's threatening you now and uh, it's adding a lot of anxiety to your performance, causing you to perform worse and start to drop. This can, that can also lead to choking if, obviously at an uh, advanced level, you can start to choke and perform very poorly. Trait anxiety. This is a behavioural tendency to feel threatened even in situations that are not really threatening and then to re respond with this with a high level of state anxiety. Um, so for example, if you feel threatened in a certain say, situation, you may act in a particular way um, or change the way you play within sport just because you feel threatened when actually the situation isn't, isn't as threatening as you first believe. But this can also lead to state anxiety, which again obviously can cause a poor performance. Um, finally, somatic anxiety. This is your perception of the physiological change that happens in a particular situation. So this could be if you're under a certain amount of pressure, your heart rate can increase, your breathing rate can increase, you begin to sweat under pressure, maybe in a situation where you shouldn't be sweating, um, you get very tense, you have a very closed body language, you're not very open, it's very obvious you're feeling under pressure, you're not very comfortable in the situation that you're under, um, perhaps your arousal level is very high as well now, so you're becoming over aroused and you're losing a slight level of concentration, causing you to perform at a lower level. Um, this is all to do with how an athlete views these changes. They could be no different than normal, but the athlete's perception makes them far worse. So every individual who sees a certain situation has a behavioural response to that situation. So therefore, their body takes changes within that situation in order to perform at the best level. Thank you for listening.